Hi, today we are going to do some exciting experiments thanks to your submissions. And if I have to listen to anything, I'm going to shove my sponsor Raycon into my ears. They are tiny and discreet. So much battery life. What? I can't hear you. Because they seal to my ears so well. And the sound is oomph. Get up to 20% off of Raycon earbuds from my link by raycon.com slash electroboom. Alright, let's do it. Oh wait, roll the intro. Just watch it on double the speed. Hey yo, made it moving mad. Well, yes, I do watch KSI videos and comment on them. I deserve happiness and entertainment too. Allow it, man. Allow it. Mehdi, please help me. I got a school project to make an electroscope. Can you please suggest simple and good designs? I obviously can. Right after I figure out what's an electroscope. Oh, these guys, okay. It's the thing that detects high voltage or static electricity by spreading its leaves apart. Well, I mean, what you made seems pretty adequate. But let me see if I can come up with a more creative design. For example, here I folded a thin sheet of aluminum foil. And if I use my magic wand that creates electrostatic and charge my body, you'll see that the sheets will spread apart. Ouch! Needless to say, charging your body will have consequences. So let's just charge those plates there. See? They open up a little bit. Of course, these sheets spread apart because there is the same charge on them that repel each other. But these can't hold charge for long because the charges run away from sharp edges. And that's why they typically put them in glass jars to hold the charge. Ah! And that's why one should not put their hand close to high voltage. Never fear. Let's see if I can come up with a new design. So here is my invention, which is an electroscope, which is made of two circles, one copper and one I made from a light aluminum sheet like this. Now let's charge my body carefully and see what happens. I put my feet up and carefully charge my body. Oh, look at that. It's charged. And it's holding its charge. Oh, it went down. If I charge again. Ow! Mother f There's a loose ground wire here. Trying again. There you go. It holds the charge pretty well. If I put my foot down. Boop. <laughs> Let's try to discharge to it directly. There you go. The charges run away very quickly though. Does it work better if I put it in a cup? Let me charge my body first carefully. Oh. Whoop. Whoop. And I think the distance between the plates is linear with voltage level. Is it? See the electric force that pushes the plate up is equal to a constant times charge on plate 1 times charge on plate 2 divided by their distance squared. But since the two plates have the same size and shape, I guess we can assume they have the same charges on them. So the electric force is equal to K times Q squared over D squared. And since the top plate is floating in mid-air, it means that the electric force is equal to the force of gravity of that plate. And we can simplify it and we get charge of the plate over distance is equal to a constant but the system has an overall parasitic capacitance to the environment which we can assume is fixed as long as the environment around it is fixed. But if I, for example, bring my hand close, the capacitance changes. So let's assume the environment is fixed. So the charge over the entire setup I'm showing with the large Q is equal to the capacitance times the voltage on the setup. And I think it's safe to assume that the charge on the plate is a constant fraction of the overall charge. So now we put these three together and we get distance is equal to voltage times this constant, which I call EB for electro boom. So it seems like, based on a bunch of assumptions, the distance between the two plates is proportional to voltage on the system. Which is very convenient. We can measure the voltage based on the distance between the plates. I guess it's something that has to be tested and verified. But if that's true, it will be a very good way to measure super high voltages, which are otherwise very hard to measure. Just credit me when it goes to production. And here it is in the glass. 
And of course, one of the big factors in all those calculations is how much charge is running away from the system. When you stub your toe at 3 a.m., what is that face? Yeah. Evil Mehdi scares me. Evil Mehdi be like, free energy exists. There is no free energy. If Evil Mehdi and I touch, do we turn into pure energy? Free energy? EE exam be like credit to Derek Muller from Veritasium. Can anyone answer? What is this question? We have a circuit. The length of the circuit on each side is half a light year. When switch S is closed, bulb B will light up in one year, two year. Hmm. Let's try to solve it. Well, see, when you close the switch, the wave of... El oh, wait. I just recorded a whole bunch of thoughts around it, but then I realized that Derek of Veritasium just uploaded a video with a ton of theories around it, which is a great video, but I don't agree with his conclusion. So brace yourself, Derek, because here I come in my next video, which is another friendly disagreement. As usual. Mehdi, check this out. What now? All right, bro, it's time. It's a new it's computer or something? What am I watching? Oh my God! Find what's wrong in this picture. This can't be an outlet. Otherwise, the humanity. Is this possible? <laughs> nice. Of course it is possible. Again, this is the type that interrupts the output arcs at audible frequency and you hear it. So changing that interrupt frequency, you hear different notes. I wonder if anyone designed one of those analog outputs. I do have a ZVS circuit. I wonder if I can easily modify it to create a nice sounding analog audio. Here's the ZVS circuit that can create some decent high voltage arcs. I'm thinking if I can modulate the arcs output power with the audio input, I should be able to make some audible sound. And I should be able to do it by changing the supply voltage to the ZVS circuit. And with this circuit, the voltage supply directly changes with the audio input. Let's give it a try. Now, we simply turn it on. <laughs> oh, six. Okay, wish me luck. We turn on the power supply. Nothing blown yet. Plug in my phone and play my song. Let's see. Hey, I can hear it. Let's give it more juice with the battery. Hopefully it won't blow up right away. It's playing. The audio signal is not that strong though. Let me put my microphone closer. The audio output is quite clear. The only problem is that the signal coming out of the phone is not that strong, so I guess that's the maximum volume we get. I really thought these transistors would blow up under so much load, but I guess doubling them off paid off. <laughs> Latity intro played on a DIY ARC speaker. Let's see. I wonder how he designed his circuit. Rectified this. Oh yeah, I've seen this posted multiple times as if the guy or gal is generating free energy with those magnets turning the motor. That's not the case, it's just a regular DC motor. See, I take this DC motor apart, and of course DC motors have magnets in them already. If I connect the rotor and the brushes to the power supply and turn it on, it doesn't turn. But if I bring a magnet close, it starts turning, ouch. So nothing extraordinary to see here. Electroboom cat. Don't let the cat leak the outlet. <laughs> Should have worn ESD strap. Oop. What happened? <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh. Well, nobody got hurt. It seems like right when the guy touches the steel ground, he looks like he's stepping on a landmine. What is going on? See? There is nothing there to burn. 
I do think there must be static discharge, but what's burning? It might be some flammable gas or something there. It was cotton yarn, so there could also have been fine particles. Hmm, so maybe a dust explosion? Let's try it. For example, I have some foam here connected to the ground of my magic wand, and if I throw some static discharge to it, it's not gonna set it on fire. So there must be some flammable fumes there. Like this, if I put some lighter fuel in a cup and also shake it to shape some fumes in it, then if we put the ground in there and try to discharge to it, I'm pretty sure it should go on fire. Oh no! No, no, no! Jeez! Kids, don't play with fire and be very worried of static discharge in presence of flammable fumes. Gasp! Evil Mehdi be like, I will use insulated tools to avoid electrocution. Evil Mehdi may live longer than I do. Well, that's it. Thanks to my sponsor Raycon for the earbuds and allowing me to hear your submissions. I mean, look at them. They are barely there. And the new Raycon Everyday Earbuds offer 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. So now being stuck in a desert with no food and shelter is much more bearable. It offers an improved rubber oil look and feel and optimized gel tips for a perfect fit and seal. Now my family can talk behind my back all they want without me hearing and then I take them off. All these and the great premium sound quality starting at half the price of other premium brands. These are great for me listening to music and podcasts and videos while I keep walking around making stuff or cleaning up or if I work out. And they have built-in microphones so you can take calls too. Yeah. Something's playing in the background. And after all this, if you don't like the product, you have 45 days to return it. So go ahead and get them at up to 20% off using my link buyraycon.com slash electroboom. Get a pair of premium Raycon everyday earbuds and support my channel in the process. Win, win, win. And thank you for watching.